Why does 50 feet of coax seem to be the magic number for portable ham radio operators? How can you use the Yesu ATOS antenna for portable without a car? And how do you transfer grid tracker contacts from one computer to another, this time on Mailbag Monday? What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to Ham Radio Tube. My name is Mike, K8MRD. If you have an amateur radio-related question for me, I would love you to email me, K8MRD at iCloud.com. We've got three really interesting things to talk about today, so let's dive right in. This first question comes from a newbie. He says, I enjoy your videos. I'm new to ham radio. Hope to have his technician and general license by summer. I, I believe you can get it earlier than that. He says, my question is, is there a reason 50 feet of coax is used for portable operations? Would it be okay to use 25 feet or would it cause a problem? So that's a great question. And I do a lot of portable operations and it's really just kind of, I, I use a few different lengths of coax. Uh, but primarily, I'm either going to use a 25 foot or a 50 foot. And the reasons are really more, it's not so much about the length. I mean, cable loss is going to be a factor. I mean, you, you kind of want to use the shortest length possible. But being portable, a lot of times you have no idea kind of what situation you're going to get into in terms of operating where you're going to set up your radio versus where your antenna is going to set up. And I found that generally 50 feet kind of hits that sweet spot to kind of have your antenna where it needs to be and have your radio where it needs to be. So here's this is 50 feet of Messi and Poloni Potaflex 7 on the Pota speed. Um, that's my primary coax. Here's 50 feet of Messi and Poloni. Uh, this is Hyperflex 10. Or excuse me, Hyperflex 7. What is this? Ultraflex 7 Sahara. <laughs> There's too many things. I also use, here's 25 feet of RG316. So basically, like, if I know where I'm going to go, like I'm in Huntsville State Park all the time, and I know the bench that I'm going to operate, I know the antenna I'm going to bring, and I know where that is, antenna is going to be. So, for example, if I'm sitting at the bench, and I'm using, say, a DX Commander or a Wolf River Coils, that antenna is kind of going to be like in the middle of the field, not quite 50 feet away, but I've got some room to play with. Conversely, if you're going to take uh, a dipole or any antenna that you're going to put the feed point up in a tree where the coax connects to the antenna, well, you've got to account for where your station is going to be, your radio, and also where is that tree? That tree might be 25 feet away, and then you got to go 25, 30 feet up. So you're now using 50 feet of coax just to get an antenna up in the air 25 feet. So you kind of have to factor that in. I'll use this small 25 foot run of RG316 when I know that my radio is going to be here. There's a tree next to me. Maybe I'm using a pack antenna that I'm just going to tie off in the tree and then run the wire up a mast. So I don't I don't need that long of an antenna, but it, it's usually and and it, you it comes with experience too and and goes back to do you know where you're going? If you're going if I'm going to a new park, I'm definitely bringing a longer length of coax. And sometimes I might even bring here's 100 feet of coax just because I might not know the situation I'm getting into and I would rather have it and not need it. Another thing to consider with uh, antennas like NFEDs, the, the coaxial cable, the, the outer shield, is actually acting as the counterpoise for the antenna. So really you don't want to go too short, like 17 feet would, would kind of be the minimum for that. So 25 feet, you're fine. But yeah, it can affect performance. Even with uh, antennas like a, a Wolf River Coils that does have a ground radio system, they still recommend at least, I think, 30 feet of coax to, to really kind of make that work efficiently. So it's a whole big uh, rabbit hole you can go down, but 25 feet, 50 feet, 100 feet, you're going to be fine. So hopefully that helps answer your question. Good luck getting your technician uh, in general, and I hope to work you on the air sometime soon. Thanks so much for writing in, though. I appreciate it. Next, we've got a question about the Yesu ATOS. He says, I scored a new inbox ATOS 120A at the ham swap meet and was wondering if you had any advice for mounts. I drive a Tesla, so mounting to that is out for now, but I'll be using the antenna at home and hopefully for some POTA activations out here in BK29. 
Always love and appreciate the video. So thanks so much for writing in. Congratulations on your new ATOS, by the way. That is a fantastic antenna. So there's actually quite a few things that you can do. First of all, this is something I made up. Now, you don't want to do this, but I'll show you how to modify this. This is just... Uh, this is actually an old Wolf River Coils leg, but basically just a piece of metal that I've ground into a spike using my angle grinder. And this is a mirror mount that has a uh, SO239 to a three inch, or excuse me, three eighths by uh, whatever the heck thread we use, quarter by three eighths thread there, whatever it is. So you can get this same kind of mount, and we'll hop on the internet machine in a second to stick this in the ground, but have an SO239 here instead of this 3 8 one, screw the ATOS into that, and then I'll use these bolts, I'll unscrew this, and I'll use a few radial wires uh, with, with eyelets on there as my ground radial system. So something like this could work, but not with this 3 8 adapter. But let's hop on the internet and I'll show you some options to how to get this to work really easily. So the first thing here, just on Amazon, uh, I searched for uh, SO239 mount, and then you get this SO239 mirror mount. So basically exactly like what I have uh, that we were just looking at a second ago, but this has an SO239 to SO239 that your ATOS will screw right onto. You screw the coax into the bottom, and then again, you would put your uh, ground radials attached to these uh, nuts and bolts here. If you went down the route that I have right now, where I have that 3 8 3 8 by 24, that's it, uh, mount, I could get something like this. This is from American Radio Supply. $5, you can get this little adapter. So this 3 8 part screws into my 3 8 and now I have an SO239. And again, put your ground radials on the uh, lugs there. Another thing, uh, you can also get them on Amazon for a few dollars more and straight out of China, so you'll, you'll wait a couple weeks to get them, but, you know, 10 bucks, you're, uh, you're in the game there. Here's another thing I found on eBay, again from China, so, you know, <laughs> do what you will with that, but this is an SO239 on the base and then an SO239 up top with a ground stake and it's 38 bucks. So this will do exactly what you need. Here we have uh, some places to put our counterpoise there. So something like this might be really cool as well. I, I actually really like the design of this, so that could be cool. And then uh, another thing that is kind of popular, I've seen like HOA Ham, I think Cam Radio Dude did a video on this, maybe uh, Steve temporarily offline. Uh, I don't own one of these, but just a tripod that's already ready to do exactly what you want. It's got the SO239 on top. Here we have, these are where you would screw your counterpoise wires, or your ground radials. And because it's just power over coax, you just run your coax from your Yaso radio to the ATOS and you're good to go. So a few options all from, uh, from $15, $5, all the way up to $120. You got all kinds of options. You can also get this. This is the Mega Tripod from Wolf River Coils. I really like this because it's got a really large uh, kind of spread to it, if you will, a really large footprint. Again, it's got that 3 8 but if you get that little adapter, stick it in there. This thing is awesome. It's It's got a pretty good uh, wide base to it, so if it's a little windy, it's going to not want to tip over as much as some of the, the shorter base legs. So either that or the or the spike in the ground is, is really the most effective way I would imagine to use this. So get on the air. Let me know how it works. I expect a follow up to what your uh, ending uh, solution was, but that should steer you in the right place and uh, get a Diamond K400 and just bite the bullet and screw it to the Tesla so you can use it while you're driving. <laughs> but thanks for writing in. And lastly, we've got a question about grid tracker. This viewer says, uh, how do I move all my previous contacts on grid tracker to a new computer or having multiple computers conduct FT8 ops? Just got one of those Evolve 3s and don't want to start over on the grids I've already earned. Thanks for the help. Keep the videos coming. Well, would you believe that one Frank KG5AHJ from Tank Radio destroyed my Evolve 3 laptop, I have no idea what he did, but I'm going to give him hell for it for the rest 
of his or my life, whichever ends first. So I have to do exactly this. And uh, I do this periodically anyway, because I do use my MacBook at home, but I also have my Evolve 3 that I use for portable. And I transfer the files uh, periodically. So let me show you exactly how to do that. So first off, here we are on my Evolve 3, and you can notice I have Grid Tracker. We finally got my computer working again, thanks to Mike N8YO. And you can see I only have 12 QSOs because we went out the other day when we were in Galveston Island State Park. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna take these 12 contacts and put them on my MacBook because that's my main computer and where my main logging software is. So we're not actually gonna do anything in Grid Tracker. We're gonna do it in WSJTX. So I'm gonna go to File, I'm gonna to go to open log directory, and we're looking for this wsjtx.log.adi. I'm gonna right click that, and I am going to copy this, and now I have, I have a thumb drive uh, connected to my computer, so I'm gonna go ahead and paste this log into the thumb drive, and then I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into my Mac, the thumb drive. And now I can open up this log. I'm just gonna drag this to my desktop. And then using my logging software, I'm gonna import that ADIF into my logging software. Whoops. We're on desktop, WSJTX ADI. Open that. Now I've actually already imported this, but I'll just show you. Now my logging software checks for dupes. Hopefully yours does too. We can hit finish. So now those 12 contacts that were on my Evolve are now in my main logging software. The next step that I wanna do, because I wanna get all of my contacts in both grid trackers, both on my MacBook and on my Evolve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select by, uh, excuse me, select by mode. So now I'm gonna look for my FT8 contacts. I got some FT4s we're gonna throw in there as well. So I'm gonna select this first one and I'm gonna scroll all the way down because I wanna grab every contact that I've made on FT8 since I moved to Texas in 2021. So here, February 14th, 2021 is the first contact I made since I moved to Texas. So now I've got 4,157 contacts highlighted. I'm gonna go here to logbook and I'm going to export selected QSOs as ADIF. And I'll just call this uh, FT82 grid tracker. That uh, grid is good enough. And I'm just gonna save this on my desktop. So now here I have grid tracker open. You can see I've got 1,034 contacts in here. And here is the file that we just created from my log. So I'm actually gonna hit clear log on this. And right here where it says ADIF, I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna go to my desktop folder. I'm gonna highlight that, hit open. And now we have 4,104. A Little bit different than the 4,157. I think I've got some dupes in there. So that's why, but now you can see I've got all of these grids in here. We've got some rare islands out there. And then I can do the same thing on my Evolve. So I'm going to, uh, now the, we go to this drive. I'm gonna copy this file over to my thumb drive. We'll go ahead and eject that. And I'm gonna put that in the Evolve. So now we're back on the Evolve. I've hit clear log. And now we're just gonna go here to ADIF. We're gonna go to my uh, thumb drive here. We're gonna select this FT8 to grid tracker. We're gonna open that up. And there you can see we've got the 4104 contacts and everything is there. So now they're on both computers, just like that. And I'll do this periodically from time to time. I actually use my Evolve for FT8 more than I do my uh, computer here in the house. And I'll just have to do that periodically from time to time when I want to sync everything. There's probably another way. Maybe there's an easier way to do it uh, over the cloud or something, but uh, I, I don't really like automating my logs, so I, I kind of prefer it to do uh, the manual way. But that's how I do it. And now you know the rest of the story. And if you guys have amateur radio-related questions for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. Thanks, everyone, for writing in. Thanks, you guys, for watching. And we'll see you again on another episode of Mailbag Monday. My name is Mike, K8MRD. This is Ham Radio Tube 73.